lucky this morning. Buy me another thousand of Colorado copper. Same way? Yes, and an additional hundred every quarter rise. Martin. To John Hart's account. Hey, Jackson, who's a thousand shares? Lucky Hart, we're beginning to call him. One of these touch it and watch it turn to gold, Jet. So that's John Hart, huh? He ought to be a good bet for tomorrow's story. Hello, Mr. Hart. Hello. Uh, Stewart's the name. Phil Stewart, the rambling reporter. My headline, too. Probably accounts for its boldness. Uh, no fooling. Swell alliteration, what? Public pocketing prodigious profits. Say, is that a tongue twister or isn't it? Do you, uh, <clears throat> do you ever read my syndicated column? Yes, I'm afraid I do. Page one, section two, column three. Well, I'm a smoke tearing, so somebody does read it after all. Say, can you see yourself having to write that kind of stuff? No, I'm sorry, I can't. It's pretty bad. Yeah, that's what comes from having to write down to your public. But they seem to like it. You know, it's no easy job interviewing a man on the street every day. So what? So what about you being Kamara's story? Listen, young fella, I can save you a lot of trouble. A story on me wouldn't mean a thing to your editor. But I'm not good copy. I've never been in the newspaper. And here's your chance. Now, let's see, the, uh, the middle initial is, um... Forget it. Don't be a stuffed shirt. Come on, give. All right, your office or mine? The customer's office will do. Now, Mr. Hart, you believe we've reached the ultimate climax in prosperity, don't you? Well, yes and no. I, uh... I see. You consider this nation like a man smoking a cigar in a powder magazine. Values exaggerated, all out of proportion, right? Well, I... And I... I agree with you, Mr. Hart. After the explosion, what then? Disaster, destruction, ruin. Oh, I don't know. It... Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Hart, and you're right. The downward swing of the cycle is at hand. Financial doom is just around the corner. Oh, I wouldn't say that. That's... Only half but... the story, Mr. Hart. The wolves are gathering for the kill. Tragedy is coming for the saps, I mean the sheep. And who's going to be holding the bag? John W. Public. But Stuart, what you want to say, Mr. Hart, is this. Beware of the Goths and the Vandals waiting in their lairs for the fatal moment. How's that? <laughs> well, something like that. Now you, you have quite a flair for dramatics. Instead of writing a column, you should write plays. I did write one. You did, huh? I bet it was dynamic. It was terrible. Well, thanks for the lowdown. My public will take this in a big way. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going to print that bunk. What difference does it make what I print so long as it's supported by fact? <laughs> you know, Mr. Hart, if I were in the big money like you, I'd... Well, it's my guess that what's going to happen is as uncertain as the toss of a coin. Yes, sir. As uncertain as the toss of a coin. Well, you toss it. If you call it, you can print that story under my name. Heads or tails? You call it. Tails. The story's yours. Hey, what is that? Where'd you get it? Oh, I picked that up rambling through Rome at the expense of my editor. Supposed to be the last of the 30 pieces. Probably number 87. <laughs> Go on, turn it over. Gee, very interesting. Yeah, the old wolf, the beast of prey herself. 
Gee, I'd like to have that, Stuart. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. You give me an inside story on financial matters once a month, and it's yours. How about it? <laughs> You're on. Well, I hope my lucky piece does well by you. I've got to be rambling along. I'll see you the first of the month. Hey, uh, what's the headline for uh, our story? Uh, financier foresees financial flop. <laughs> Send a stenographer in here, please. How are you on calling coins? Lucky? Sometimes. Call this. Uh, uh, Tails. Thanks. Put in a selling order, Jackson. I'm getting out. Oh, but Mr. Hart, the market is up and it's going down. Well, list of my holdings, sell everything at market. What's up, Mr. Hart? Do you know anything? Yes, Jackson. I do know something. How about letting me in on it? You can find out for a nickel in tomorrow's globe. Column one, section two, page three. Mr. Hart, to see Mr. Simon or Mr. Nito, or both. Mr. John Hart? Right. I was sent for. Here, you see? The newspapers are still talking about John Hart. I wonder what's keeping him. What if he doesn't come? Stop worrying, can't you? Oh, sit down. Without heart, our idea isn't worth a cent. Now, listen. I told him it was very important, and he said he'd come up. Oh, because you said it was important, he'll come up. Well, what do you think? No. Oh. <laughs> well? well? Mr. Hart's outside. Uh, give us a couple seconds, Gert, then send him in. Yes. Because I told him he said he'd come up. Have you ever been told that you're a very pretty girl? Oh, once or twice. Only once or twice, huh? Our blind population must be greater than I suspected. Oh, Mr. Hart. Oh, hello, John. Oh, hello, Simon. Hello, John. It's nice to see you again. Very nice of you to come up to my office. Your office? Uh, well, our office. <laughs> Thanks, Nito. Now that we've disposed of the formalities, what do you want to see me about? Here, here. Well, come sit down, sit down. Well, let's have it. What's on your mind? You tell him. You are the noise, you tell him. Me, I am the brains. John, I got an idea. You got an idea? All right, we've got an idea. Well, coming from both of you, it ought to be good for life imprisonment at least. <laughs> Funny fellow. Uh, always comical. Now, what we need to put over our idea is a front. Someone honest, respectable. Someone sufficiently important in the city. And you think... Oh, you're all of that. You've got a clean slate. You've never been mixed up in anything shady. Thanks, Simon. As strange as it may seem, I intend to stay that way. Why not? 
From where you sit, there's money in it. Have you ever heard of a receivership? Naturally. What are you driving at? No, no, wait, now wait. Now let me explain. We say, for instance, that you are a uh, stockholder in the ABC Corporation. You think the management's wrong. You don't like the way they're handling your interests. So you petition the courts for a receivership. Someone to protect the interest of the little stockholders. The receiver. Well, what is your point? Well, the choice of the receiver is up to the court. Now, with our political connection, the judge will feel it a privilege to appoint our choice. And that's where you come in, the receiver. Nothing to do but handle all the money. Not bad, eh? On a three-way split, I mean. Of course, it is understood that you will appoint us attorneys for the receiver. And that's extra gravy. I give you my word, fortunes are going to be made in the receiverships. You boys have got it all figured out, haven't you? Oh, oh it is a work of art. Not one hole in it, legally. And what I like about it, it's clean as a whistle. Yes. Clean as a whistle. You're not going to pass this up. I hate to disappoint you, boys, but I don't want any part of it. But it's the chance of a lifetime. It's no use, man. I like money, but not that kind. But listen, John. Look here. If we don't grab it, somebody else will. The cash you've got now is just a drop in the bucket. This will mean millions. Power. Gold buys power. And power spells anything you want. Wait a minute. Give me a chance to think. Cigar in a powder magazine. Disaster. Destruction. Values all out of proportion. Someone honest, respectable. You're all of that. I give you my word. Fortunes are going to be made in the receiverships. Only the wolves shall survive. The toss of a coin. Well, John? Uh, what about it? I'm sorry, boys. It's no use. I can't do it. Well? Mr. Frank Nito's here. Good. Send him in. Very nice of you gentlemen to have considered me for this little position of honor, but my tailor has always advised me against wearing stripes. Now, wait a minute, John. The Frank has what I think he's got. Well? well I've got it. Oh, John, this is my nephew, Frank Nito. How are you, Frank? Yeah, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Is that the way to address a gentleman? This is Mr. John Hart. Oh, oh yes, yes. I, I've read a lot about you, Mr. Hart. Well, what happened? I never missed. Here are the signed petitions to start receivership action at once. We start on the Excelsior Hotel. Frank has just come from the Davis Construction Company. They built the Excelsior. There's nothing off color about creditors demanding their payment, is there? Certainly not. You see, John, unless the Davis Construction Company step in to protect their interests, they'll wake up and find their creditors pushing them around, too. Don't you see, John? You'd be rendering a great service to the widows and orphans whose last pennies are sunk in the Davis concern. That's the idea. The Excelsior hasn't made a red cent in months. We're not going to stand by and see them rob the investing public. You see, John? Yes, Simon, I see. It's clean as a whistle. Well, what do you say? I'd like to think it over. No, we've got to know now. It won't wait. Well? Well? Mrs. Frank Nito's on the phone. Will you take it? Tell my wife I haven't come in. What she wants, I haven't got. You're good. Fine of these. Listen, gorgeous. I'm going to flip this coin. I want you to call it, understand? Perfectly. Uh, tail. Thanks. 
Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid you win. Congratulations. John, I give you my word, you won't be sorry. The Excelsior Hotel receivership ought to be worth at least $20,000 a year to us. See Mr. Harper. We have no Mr. Harper among our guests. Mr. George Harper, president of the hotel company. Sorry, but Mr. Harper never attends to business matters after six o'clock. Well, well, well how are you, Miss Darling? <laughs> You're I'm glad to see you home again, Miss Harper. What? With all the girls in your life? Oh, indeed, I was terribly worried about you. Nah, none of your blanny, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Welcome home, Miss Harper. Thank you. Hello. How do you do, Miss Harper? Did you have a pleasant crossing? Glorious. Only eight hours late. Thanks to the customs inspector. <laughs> well, well, Marcia. Hello. It's nice to have you back. Thank you so much for your corsage, Mr. Weston. Now, did you follow all the instructions in my cablegram? Didn't tell Father I was coming home, did you? No, no, indeed. It will be a surprise to him. One that will do him much good. He isn't ill, is he? No, but uh, something seems to be uh, preying on his mind lately. However, now that the family pride and joy is back. Oh, Mr. Westerman, I didn't know you were Irish, too. <laughs> Hold up, please. Yes, Miss Hoffman. Thank you so much. Hello, Mr. Blackley. How are the twins? Well, considering their father, they're doing very well. <laughs> oh, that's fine. are listening to is coming to you from the dining room of the Excelsior Hotel. Good evening, Mr. Harper. Could I interest you in some pillow slips? Why, Marsh? Darling, you're surprised. Now, what sort of behavior is this? <laughs> coming home after months without letting me know about it. Nothing particularly original, darling. Just wanted to surprise you. If I had cabled I was sailing, you would have cabled back. It's going to be a severe winter. I know you, young man. <laughs> now, let me have a good look at you. Lovely. Believe it or not, but I bought this creation in five minutes. I was all ready to leave Paris for Harvard when I saw it. I rushed into the shop and tried it on and cried out in my most horrible French soul. It's mine. <laughs> Darling. I missed you terribly, Miss Harper. Well, confidentially, Miss Harper did a little missing, too. <laughs> hey, look here, young man. What have you been doing to bring all those little pros to they weren't there when I went away. Look here, then. we're pals, aren't we? What's wrong? Been a little too ambitious, I guess. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put everything I possessed, along with all I could borrow, into this hotel. Like everyone else, I expected good times to continue. But as events change, people do likewise. My creditors are now pressing me for payment. You don't mean that, that you're going to lose the hotel? No, 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 we can't do that. You see, my dear, my business has been built on my word, my reputation, my honor. So I've got to make good, Marcia. And if they'll just give me time, I can and will make good. Why, of course you will. Look, darling, suppose we have dinner here, just the two of us. You sure you won't mind? Mine, I'd love it. <laughs> Jimmy, have one of the waiters bring up a dinner menu. Certainly, Miss Harper. Now, 
I'll keep it that way. <laughs> oh, when the waiter comes, order for both of us. And mine, Mr. Harper. No economy tonight. We're going to celebrate bigger days than ever for the great Excelsior Hotel. <laughs> Be back in a jiffy. How did I know he'd do it? I left him in his apartment. And the next thing I saw him, carrying him into the lobby. Dead. Shoot. Too bad. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Harper once or twice. Fine man, I thought. Sensitive, honorable. This is an awful thing. Well, we're not to blame. Let's not kid ourselves, Simon. We killed Harper. Um, things like this are liable to happen, you know. Sure, anything's liable to happen when people are forced into receiverships. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You know very well that Harper was behind in his payments. If we hadn't forced him, somebody else would have. You're not going to turn yellow on the first bad break, are you? What's that? I'm sorry, John. Listen, they... they can't do anything to me, can they? Nobody saw you go up or come down from his apartment, did they? No, 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 I don't think so. Well, all right, don't worry, kid. They can't have been anything on us. That might be some comfort if a fellow hadn't his conscience to deal with. I'm through. Aren't we all in a little too deep to quit now? Not so deep that I can't get out. So oh, wait, wait a minute, John. Oh, hello, hello. What a pleasant surprise. How are you, Elena? You should ask how Elena is. When was she anything but tipped up? Hello, Simon. Oh, I want you to know our very good friend, Mr. John Hart. Unfortunately for all of us, Elena is Frank's wife. <laughs> how do you do, Mrs. Nito? Among friends, it's Elena. What brought you up here? Why, darling, to see you, of course. Well, John, we started this thing together. What do you say if we stick together? It's 
pardon me. Uh, Mrs. Nito, would you do me a favor? Certainly, Mr. Hart. I'm going to toss this coin. When it falls, will you call heads or tails? Oh, yes, like Frank this. Heads, tails, heads. Well, just call one. Tails. Okay? I do you some good, huh? Good or bad, Mrs. Nito, we take it as it comes. That's the way the game is played. Oh, Mr. Hart, Elena, she's so glad. From now on, just watch us go. Yes, but where? Sir Frank, just in case anybody did see you around that apartment, I think perhaps maybe it would be better for you to slip out quietly out of town for a while. He's right, Frank. You better catch the next train out. And alone. Yeah. Nothing like playing a safe, huh? But, uh, Elena. We'll take care of Elena. Well, boys, a toast to the Excelsior Hotel. And for the sake of appearance, if for nothing else, I think it would be wise if you boys started calling me Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart? What's behind that? Oh, just a formality, Mr. Simon. From now on, it's going to be bigger and better receiverships. You boys want to string along with me, don't you? You yes, bet the yes. way do it, John. Sure, we all of us go along together. All right, Mr. Nito. Then let's not leave ourselves open for what your profession calls collusion. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Hart, I had a letter from Frank this morning. He says that now that everything is blown over, he wants to come back. Oh. Well, I think it would be better if he waited a while. Mm -hmm. Just to be safe, don't you? Anything you say, Mr. Hart. Okay, Mr. Hart. See you in the morning, monsieur. Monsieur? Oh, he don't mean anything by that. Oh, I don't know what he means. Mr. Hart? Oh, yes. Thank you. Here, take these, Jimmy. Just a minute. I'm Mr. John Hart. Who is the young lady? Miss Marsha Harper, sir. You want to keep your job in this hotel? Yes, sir. Well, it's yours, providing. Four years, hotel service, sir. Okay. Say, wait a minute. I want to ask you something. Maybe you can tell me. Well? Is he working for us or are we working for him? Why ask me? You're the brains. <laughs> Come on. It just doesn't seem possible, Marcia. In all my years of practicing law, this is the most unethical exactly, case Exactly, that... Mr. Dunbar. How could such a thing be done? Well, as I told you before, principally on the clean character of this man, John Hart, aided by legal trickery and engineered by attorneys who should be disbarred. The whole thing is an outrage. I can't help but feel that this man Hart is responsible for father's death. Marcia, dear, please don't feel that way. Uh, tell me, what are your plans? Nothing definite. It all happened so quickly, this. If I can be of any help to you. Thank you. May I keep this? Yes, certainly. Take it along, if you like. Mr. Hart and I will meet one of these days. When we do, you'll remember it. Oh, you here again? I want to see Mr. Hart, please. I told you, he doesn't see anyone without an appointment. But I've tried to make an appointment for a week. So you have, honey. But Mr. Hart's a very busy man. Do try once more, please. You win. 
Big business begets bragging, bragging braggarts. <laughs> How's that for an amateur? Not bad. Can you say, uh, Willie's wooden whistle wouldn't whistle. Willie's willie... Willie's willing, Willie's willing, would <laughs> No, you're not even an amateur. Excuse me, Mr. Hart. Yes? But this young lady insisted you'd see her. Tell her I'm too busy. Yes, Mr. Hart. Oh, Gert. Yes, Mr. Hart? Ask her to wait. Yes, Mr. Hart. Well, I guess it's high time for the rambling reporter to ramble on. It's George. This young lady out here, oh, my secretary isn't very good at that sort of thing. As you go out, would you mind telling her that I'm sorry that I can't see her? You know, do it nicely. Miss Marcia Harper. She isn't the daughter of the old gent who committed suicide. Yes. Boys and girls, did I work on that case or didn't I? Remember it, don't you? Slightly. Well, rambling reporter respectfully relays receiver's regrets. Hello, Miss Harper. Mr. Hart exceedingly regrets his inability to see you this afternoon. When will he see me? Why, uh... Why, uh... Of course, uh, we'll have to let you know when. I have your number. I'll be glad to call you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Harper. The name's Stuart. Allow me. So help me, Miss Harper, this isn't the old gag, but I've seen you somewhere before. In the Hotel Excelsior, I believe. That's quite possible. I lived there until your John Hart robbed my father of it. Oh, yes, yes. You know, I often wondered how Hart put that deal over. The same way he must be putting all the others over, crookedly. Mr. Hart. Each day adds something to thy possession. Get me Simon and Nito. Let 
spent half by the bill for the receiver shipping our name. I'm sorry, gentlemen, I can't do anything for you. But Mr. Hart promised it would be a dividend on the building and loan this month. Every cent we have is in that company. My husband hasn't had a job in months. Can't you do I'm something? I'm sorry, but there won't be a dividend until Mr. Hart can sell the property. What, again? If I had your go get it, I'd go places. Well, Mr. Hart's tied up. I'll wait. It's your time being wasted, honey, not mine. If I were you, Well, I'd... what's the matter? Why can't I get Simon and Nito? Mr. Hart, may I speak with you on Marsha Harper? I should be very happy to see you some other day, Miss Harper, but at the moment I'm much too busy. But I've been waiting, trying to see you for months. Well, well, well? They're on their way over. Mr. Hart. Some other time, Miss Harper. Perhaps next week. Elena! We've got to be more careful. Simon and Nita are on the way over here. Frank may be with them. Just a moment, young lady. What is the meaning of this? That's what I would like to know. How long do you think you can get away with treating decent people the way you've been doing? You'd better go now. I'll see you later. Apparently, you're not aware of it. But this happens to be my private office. Not exactly. This office really belongs to those people out there who pay for it. Very well, young lady. Since you forced your way in here, perhaps you'll tell me what you want. Well, I came to ask you for a position. But now that I'm here, I want to tell you exactly what I think of you. What do you think of me? I think you're an unscrupulous trickster who robbed my father of his hotel. Not satisfied with that, you're now pocketing the income which rightfully belongs to the creditors. Mr. Hart, I want that property turned over to the estate. Now, see here, Miss Harper. The court appointed me receiver. I didn't ask for the job. Didn't you? Well, of course, now you're talking like a silly girl. If you know anything about law... Just enough to convince me that while it provides much rope, it also permits a knot or two. Will you please leave now? My phone number. I'll expect a call regarding the hotel. Don't pull another fast one on me, baby. Late again, pal, but honest, I got tied up on an interview. Well, how did you make out? Come on, Ty. Instead of asking for a position as you advised, I lost my head and told him what I thought of him. No. But I have some information that may be more valuable. Then it's just as well I didn't blow in. Mm -hmm. He might have suspected something between us. Listen, Phil, do you know anybody at Langford Mills? No. How about Midwest chain stores? Never heard of them. Continental Utilities? Continental Utilities? Just the head of the works, that's all. Oh. Well, I've given old man DuPont more free publicity than the King of Siam. Besides, my oldest brother and Take me... Take me there. Now? Right away. What's up? Plenty, I hope. Ah, persecuted petticoat ponders prosecution. That's only the second time I've seen the girl while being jealous of her. Darling, where you are concerned, Elena is jealous of every woman. And that's the trouble with Elena. You see, my sweet, I am not the fool you would like me to be. Mr. Simon and Mr. Nito are here. All right. See you for dinner. 
7.30 and look your loveliest. Come in, gentlemen. Why the precaution? You can't be too careful. Eh, John? Especially on payday. <laughs> well? Well, here we are, gentlemen. 30,000. 10 for you, 10 for you, and 10 for me. From now on, we're going to have a new deal. Yeah? What's the matter with the old deal? What's on your mind, John? Beginning today, we're going to split 50-50. In other words, I'm going to take half, and you gentlemen split the remaining half between you. Oh, no, nothing you're doing. No, that is not honest. No, it's not honest. Once upon a time, my fellow parasites, I had a little decency and self-respect. I could even feel sorry for people in trouble. Of course, you wouldn't understand it. But I put some value on the things I've lost. My friends, their respect, but particularly my own self-respect. I've wallowed in this rotten business until today, we're practically three of a kind. All rats in the same cupboard. Only I'm the big rat. So you take what I choose to give you, or else. No, no, we oh, don't. You can't get away with this. You need us as much as we need you. Don't forget you're bound by a gentleman's agreement. Gentlemen, yes, until they catch up with us. Then we're through. Very well, gentlemen. Oh, wait a minute, uh, John. Let's try and see our side of this, too. We're perfectly willing to go along with you, but I think perhaps maybe we should have something in black and white. Hmm? Yeah. Our deal was to represent you in all these receiverships, huh? Right. So we want something in writing regarding our share in these deals. Something that guarantees you'll always appoint us attorneys for the receiver. Just to prove there's honor among gentlemen, huh? Well, if you want to put it that way. All right, Simon, I'm agreed. If one hangs, we all hang. What do you want to bring that up for? <laughs> well, uh, all right. Let's shake on it. On my terms. Very well, gentlemen. We're going after Continental Utilities. Continental Utility? Why, that's a closed corporation. You couldn't get away with that. Oh, of course not. They're too big. Continental Utilities control the things that people must have. Light, power. Millions each month are spent for that service. Continental Utility? Well, that's, that's a $50 million corporation. The receivership fees would be terrific. Yeah, they would, wouldn't they? Big. Get me Continental Utilities, and I'll sign your gentleman's agreement. Well, all right, John. It's a tough assignment. It may take months. But we'll get Continental Utilities, somehow. The fact is, Mr. Thompson, Continental Utilities is in very bad condition. Now, I represent a stockholders committee. I was assured that those Continental bonds would take care of me as long as I lived. Take care of you, Mrs. Jones? Well, I happen to know you won't get next month's interest in those bonds. Oh, dear. Before my husband died, he told me I could depend on that money. I tell you, Continental's been mismanaged, swindled, and robbed. The assets are sound, but they must be protected for your interest. What can we do? Do? We may be able to save everything if we remove the present manager and have a receiver appointed. I... I know so little about business. An honest man were appointed. A, a big man. 
like, like John Hart. Business, always business when I come. Why did you have to pick today for your quarrel, today of all days? Why? 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 For one week now you have not seen me. Why? Where were you last night? Where was I last night? Where? How many times must I tell you? I was with your husband. Ask him if you care to. I did ask him. Next time, darling. Elena will tell him. Yes? Mr. Frank Nito to see you. If I wasn't so fond of my wife, I could go for you. If I wasn't so fond of myself, I might consider it. Well, boss, everything okay? It was a great job, Frank. Not the I've handled yet, Mr. Hart. It was perfect. Yes, Mr. Hart. Make out the usual check for Mr. Frank Nito. Telephone Judge Gilbert. Tell him I'm giving a little pre-election dinner party for him on Wednesday night. Include Mrs. Gilbert. Then telephone the hotel and have them arrange the necessary details. Get me Simon and Nito. Tell them to come over here right away. What's the matter? Has Elena been here? Yes. Yes, she has. She questioned where you were last night and came to see me to confirm it. I had no idea she was as jealous as you are. I can't help it, Mr. Hart. She's driving me mad. I give her every dollar I make and still she's not satisfied. And somebody's buying her clothes and jewels and things. And someday, I'll find out who. Maybe this will help a bit. We'll call it a bonus for your work on the Continental deal, shall we? But Mr. Hart, there's, there's a couple of thousand here. Well... Use it for Mrs. Nito. Take her to the best gown shop in town. Buy her something really smart. Naturally, I'm expecting both of you at the party, so tell her to look like a million. Well, I'm sorry I acted the way I did. Forget it. Thanks for the bonus, Mr. Hart. It was nothing, Frank. Elena's worth it. And we, Judge Gilbert, who are making it our business to see that you are re-elected, realize that justice has always been your inspiration. Everyone, friend and foe alike, knows that as long as you are in office, you will continue to do the right thing for the right people. <laughs> now, realizing how the people of our city need you, and knowing that we are safe, as long as you are in office. Judge Gilbert, we, your interested friends, present to you, to your campaign committee, this little check. Yeah. Our contribution to your forthcoming election. And it is my earnest hope that you will spend many useful years on the bench. Hello.
But, Mr. DuPont, you're not going to give up without a struggle. Oh, well, we'll get control again, as soon as the books are examined. But that will take months, Mr. DuPont. In the meantime, what will happen? The company will be cleaned out. That's what will happen. We must find sufficient evidence to incriminate Hart. I know it can be done. And when that happens, it's curtains for the biggest receivership ring since... since, since Noah took over the ark. Please. Mr. Hart is here now. Harry Philly mustn't find you here. Good morning. The court order, Mr. DuPont. My authority is receiver. How do you do, Mr. Hart? Why, Miss Harper. Imagine seeing you here. How flattering. I didn't really expect you to remember me. No? Rather difficult to forget a young lady who called me the things you did. Oh, that was the day I was playing Lady Macbeth. Very dramatic and all that. <laughs> what are you playing today, Miss Harper? Just myself. I've learned a lot of things since that day I broke into your office. Yes? What, for instance? Well, for one thing, the investors in my father's hotel would have lost everything if you hadn't come to their assistance. Well, what are you doing here? I was Mr. DuPont's private secretary. These are the keys to his private filing cabinet in his safe. Oh, so you concluded I wouldn't require your services. And when a better position offered itself, I jumped the chance. You see, Mr. Hart, I knew this was coming for some time. You know, you are the most delightful little liar. Little unfair, aren't you? Perhaps, but at least not stupid. I can't recall having done anything that might have changed your opinion of me. Well, taking over this plant at a time when the savings of thousands are at stake is in itself enough to change my opinion. If I thought I could trust you, I might ask you to change your mind about leaving. I wish you wouldn't. Because you could change it so easily. And I, well, I don't like to go back on my word. Besides, when I work, I like to keep my mind on what I'm doing. Either I'm the fool my father always maintained, or... Do you have a gamble? We all take chances. I'm going to toss this coin. You call it. If you win, you go. If I win, you stay, and I'll double your salary. Now, that's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> now, you're a persuasive individual, aren't you? Well, totally against my better judgment. Go ahead. Heads. You win. Lucky, aren't you? I never miss. 
So far, I've made a copy of every business transaction Hart has made for the past three months. How about it? Do you think he suspects? No, but he hardly left me out of his sight, even during lunch hour. Say, Mr. Hart seems to be doing all right, taking thousands of dollars out of the business every week. Boy, wait till DuPont and his lawyers see this. Look, Phil, he's getting a 20% commission on every bit of equipment bought and sold. If we can only connect this up with Hart's appointment as receiver... That's just what I'm working on now. Oh, Phil, I must get back. Wait a minute, Harper. How about breaking down and telling me what I'm to do about this strange power I have over women? Well, it seems to work all right with your housekeeper. Sure, all the old ladies love it. Even my mother. She thinks I'm cute, too. <laughs> Don Juan, the irresistible. Tell me. What is this nasty streak in your otherwise lovable nature that keeps you from saying yes? Phil, before I met you, I took on a big job, a difficult job. It isn't completed yet, and until it is... You'll keep on saying no. Well, until some judge gives Hart an extended holiday with a uniform, anyway. Or we might wait until Mr. Hoover and Mr. Roosevelt sit down to a game of chess. <laughs> Any calls while I was out, Jerry? No. Mr. Hart back here? Mm-hmm. Anyone with him? Just Simon and Nito. Your memory is as good as mine. Ours. All right, ours. You said if we would bring this continental receivership to you, you would sign this agreement for us. That's right. But I've changed my mind. Oh, no, Hart. You can't get away with that. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh. That's quite all right. These gentlemen are just leaving. No, oh, no, no, no. These gentlemen are not just leaving. Not until this business is settled. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you were going. These letters are ready for me. Have a cigar, gentlemen. No more interruption. It would be nice if one of these got into the hands of the wrong people. Well, they're just for your protection. Oh, very thoughtful. You're concerned for me. The mother instinct in both of you boys is very touching. What's the mother instinct got to do with it? All right, boys, I'll keep my promise. Well, that's better. But we'll all sign. Well, I, I don't think it is necessary that we sign. Oh, I wouldn't think of having you boys sink without me. One for all and all for one. Like the three musketeers. You mean the three racketeers. Don't weep. Sign. Au revoir, merry gentlemen. Arrivederci. Monsieur.
Will you come in here, please, Miss Harper? Yes, Mr. Hart. Oh, these are ready for filing. Shall I file this too, Mr. Hart? No. No, I'll take that. That's entirely personal. I've been watching you lately, Miss Harper. You're an unusual girl. Clever, too. Thank you. Funny. I've never noticed your eyes before, Marcia. They're lovely. Such honest eyes. Wasn't it a poet who said, the eyes are mirrors of the soul? Miss... Uh, uh, Marcia. Would you dine with me tonight? Well... I have some confidential matters I should like to discuss with you. Strictly a business. Very well. 7.30, my apartment. Yes, Mr. Hart. Anything else, Mr. Hart? You might stop at the flower shop and get the corsage I ordered. Yes, sir. Elena told me everything. It was you. And you needn't call the police. I'm giving myself up. All right. I'll wait here for you. But if you're not down in an hour, I'll come sailing up full speed ahead. These are for you. Is this what you're looking for? With 
my kindest compliments. You've earned it. Added to your other evidence, this is the positive proof you want to convict Simon and Nito and all of us. You knew that... I suspected. Now I know. You resorted to very unladylike tactics. If you knew, why did you keep me on? Why did you invite me here? Perhaps I had a dream of, of something different. Most of mine have been of gold. Well, at least your dreams have come true, haven't they? That's the pity of it. Very futile money, when the final word is said. Perhaps if I'd met you the morning I met Stuart, my dreams might have been totally different. Love Stuart, don't you? Too bad he can't be in on the closing chapter. He figured so prominently in the first. You're ill. Let me call the doctor. No, no, please. He'd only intrude. My... My sincerest apologies. Our little... Our little dinner must be postponed. What is it? I don't know what it is, but I... Well, I can't say the things to you that I've rehearsed for months. They don't seem to mean anything. They've lost their force. The end of the rainbow is never what we expect. Just another fallacy. I think you'd better go now. I have an idea Stuart is waiting. Orchids. Usually they are forced to keep company with the most unattractive women. Rambling Romeo reaps. Reaps resplendent reward. 